Hello everyone and welcome back to the good stuff. We are back at the 1857 First American Chess Congress in Game 3 of their match, Louis Paulson versus Paul Charles Morphy. Now in Game 2, Morphy had a, a brilliant victory. Uh, he won Game 1, then in Game 2 he had, a, like I said, a brilliant victory, but then he reversed the move order, supposedly because of uh, Paulson's um, uh, long thinking over sometimes over even over an hour for one move uh, and in the end uh, Morphe just switched to move order and played a suboptimal line which ended the game in a draw and the Morphe was uh, he was very uh, well even depressed by by this result and uh, it is something that will uh, will see uh, take effect in this game so this is game three uh, without further ado let's check it out uh, Paulson with the white pieces opens with e4 we have e5 from Morphe knight f3 knight to c6 and and now knight to c3, going for the three knights opening, and the bishop to c5 by Morphy. Bishop to b5, uh, and now d6. Uh, we have d4, so all standard stuff at the time. Uh, e captures on d4, knight captures, and now bishop to d7, unpinning, preparing to win material here. So knight captures on c6, b captures, and now bishop back to a4, something that today you would not play, today you would either go uh, c4, d3, or e2, but in those days a4 was uh, considered fine. And here we have queen to h4 immediately by Morphy, already threatening mate, and uh, well, I will mention it is as of move 8 that this position has never never been repeated again. Uh, so uh, uh, Paulson has to defend, he castles here, uh, and now knight to f6. Uh, we have queen to f3, bringing the queen to help out with the defense, and already knight to g4, just going all out. Uh, uh, he's not, uh, like I said, he was very unimpressed with how he played the, the, the previous game, so he really wants to uh, crush pulse in this game. Bishop to f4, defending. Also, you can play something like queen g, uh, bishop g3 to kick away the queen. And now knight to e5, uh, asking, uh, do, do you want to capture or do you want to move the queen? Here, Paulson moves the queen, offers a queen trade, and Morphy declines. Queen to f6. Uh, and we have rook a to d1, bringing the rook into the game. We have h6 by Morphy, preparing g5 to force the, the exchange on e5. And here, king to h1 by Paulson. Uh, always a useful move. Uh, you will be able to move your f pawn, so uh, very useful. g5 by Morphy, and now bishop captures on e5. We have d captures on e5, uh, and now uh, we reach uh, a certain position where there is a secret hidden in the position. But uh, even though this game was played in 1857, uh, there is a super disgusting engine line hidden here. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, you can even pause the video and try to spot it uh, while I give you a couple of seconds, as it, it really is a nice one. Uh, so, uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, uh, as both uh, Paulson and Morphy missed it. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's uh, Rook captures on d7. And uh, I'm sure a lot of you uh, thought of this move, but then you ask yourselves, uh, okay, but what then? Uh, the point is, after king captures, you then go knight d5. You attack the queen, and of course, uh, capture is impossible due to the pin. So, let's say queen e6, you get uh, the queen out of the way. Now comes queen to c3, threatening to pick up the bishop, and also putting more pressure on c6. So, black has to do something about this bishop here. Uh, if here, then you allow bishop captures here, just picking up the rook, so you cannot go there. You could go to d4 to, to attack the queen, but then comes queen to d3. And the next, you're gonna you're gonna play c3, either win back the bishop or kick away the bishop, and then you have a lot of nasty discoveries as the king is still here. So uh, it's it would be a very difficult position to play. For example, if you move your king, let's say somewhere, then you can even go knight to b4, putting more pressure on c6, and white will just constantly be better. Uh, but uh, uh, after queen to c3 attacking the bishop, you don't have to go bishop here. You could play something else like bishop to b6, uh, but now you play rook to d1, and now again you're threatening a lot of very nasty discoveries. And after you hide the king, king c8. Now you play bishop captures on c6, and if black insists on uh, not giving back any material, for example, rook to b8, now queen to c4. Uh, and now there's the threat of just queen to a6 check, which will be deadly. Again, if you if you bring the king over to the d-file, the rook is here, you will uh, uh, be presented a lot of nasty discoveries. So again, you have to play something like bishop here to, uh, to block the rook's influence over the d-file. But again, you're going to go c3, and that's just it. You're completely winning here. Not much to do for black here. You cannot move the bishop because queen a6 just ends the game. And it's it's just game over. So this, in fact, was in the position after this uh, 
uh, D captures on E5 uh, by Morphe. So G5 and that whole plan really, really uh, not working out. But uh, it's it's to be expected as Morphe really uh, didn't take more than five minutes for for a single move. But here uh, Paulson misses the idea. Paulson first plays B4. He wants to prepare this line. He sees fractions of the line, but not the whole idea. He now wants Morphe to capture so he can just uh, capitalize on it. Captures, captures, and now knight attacks the queen and the bishop. So queen defends the bishop, and now you go captures, captures, and here you will just have a, a winning game. Rook d1 check. You're going to move the king. Bishop captures here, uh, now attacking the bishop. And it's uh, it's extremely hard to defend here. Uh, this rook is doing nothing. This rook is doing nothing. Queen to g4 is, is just a huge threat. Uh, so not not much you can do here. Queen queen will uh, capture on e5. You can it it's impossible to to defend. If you make some bringing room for the king, even ideas like rook d3 to here, uh, once the king goes to b8, and it's just game over. So uh, that's what Paulson wants with b4. Of course, Morphy not interested in that. Bishop back to d6, and now rook to d3, preparing to double up rooks on the d file. And Morphy continues happily attacking on the king's side with h5. Uh, we have rook f to d1, and now uh, first a6 uh, by Morphy, uh, with probably gaining more control over b5. It's uh, it's not uh, not an easy move to decipher what what Morphy's idea was here. Uh, for example, if uh, if he goes for example to d8 right away, uh, then b5 might be might be a nice uh, breakthrough. For example, b5 captures captures and uh, probably probably. To, to, to prevent the, this from happening. If, if bishop captures, knight captures, uh, you will have a lot of pressure here. Also, maybe the pawn will now be under attack. So a6 does seem like a, like a useful idea. But okay, uh, we have knight to e2 by Paulson, uh, remaneuvering the knight, making room for the pawn here. He wants to play a3, c4, and c5. And now rook to d8 uh, by Morphy. Uh, we have a3, now strengthening the b4 pawn, and here g4. Morphy now prepares to push h4. We have c4, uh, and here Morphy first goes queen to h6. Uh, the problem with h4 right away is that Morphy doesn't like what happens after it. For example, queen to e3, now g3, f captures, and now if you want to bust open, you don't want to play captures and then allow white h3. This is how you break through. You push h3 right away. Uh, G captures, bishop captures, uh, and now after bishop captures on c6 with check, king f8, the c5 move comes, and it is a it, it is a pretty crazy position. Bishop e7, rook captures, bishop captures, and white should always be a little bit better as he is up two pawns, and there is nothing concrete for black here. Uh, it, it it would be it would be a crazy game, of course, but uh, white should be better. Uh, so after c4, Morphy first goes queen to h6. His idea now that if queen ever retreats to e3, he would in fact be, be glad to trade queens. Uh, so c5, Paulson continues with his plan. We have h4 now, uh, an in-between move, queen to e3, and first now bishop to e7. He says, okay, you, you trade, I'm going to cap capture with the rook, and my rook is, uh, well, it's needed on, on c6 to keep an eye on the c6 pawn. Uh, so f4 by Paulson saying, what do you do here? Uh, Morphy says, okay, captures on f4. We have queen captures on f4, and only now Morphy trades. We have queen captures, uh, knight captures, and now quickly rook to h6, as the rook is important for the protection of the c6 pawn, as you'll see later in the game. So knight back to e2 by Paulson, uh, and now comes f5 by Morphy. Uh, but this allows Paulson uh, to, to, to uh, advance the pawn to e5, uh, and here uh, it's a uh, it's a really difficult position for Morphy. He has to play something. His pieces are really terribly placed. Uh, if Bishop to c8, uh, then let's say you just trade captures captures. You're gonna go Knight to d4, put pressure on c6, and uh, there's just no good way to defend this. If you go here, then you have a Bishop on b7, which is basically a pawn. If you go here, just e6 is completely winning. Not much to do here. If captures captures. Uh, and of course, if uh, no, sorry, if uh, if e6 uh, and you capture uh, with with the bishop, then you can just pin it with rook to e1. So that's not really going to work. And after e6, if you capture with the rook, uh, then well, you, you just give up uh, give up the exchange for nothing. Not re not really doing anything there. But point is, if bishop here, rook pins. Now you just. Uh, uh, threatened to capture it, uh, so you would have to defend it, king to f7, but you still just capture, knight captures, rook captures, and bishop b3 will just win material, and that's just it. 
So uh, after e5, Morphy uh, didn't find a, um, a, a good idea, and uh, it's very hard to find a good idea, something like bishop to g5 and uh, continue to somehow improve your position. Morphy decided to play rook to e6, block the pawn this way and just uh, threaten to pick it up, uh, because it's not easy to defend it. For example, if rook to e3, bishop g5, you again kick away the rook. However, this blunders the game completely for Morphy, and once again, feel free to pause the video and try to find the winning move for Paulson here while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were paying attention that the rook is crucial for the defense of the c6 pawn, congratulations. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's knight to f4. You give up the e5 pawn, but Morphy no longer gets control of the c6 pawn. So there's not much to do here. Uh, Morphy captured on e5, but now comes rook captures on d7. Rook captures on d7 and now bishop captures on c6. That's why rook to h6 and queen to h6 were uh, always eyeing that c6 pawn. Here you don't have a way of uh, of continuing to, to defend on d7. So Morphy tried bishop to d6, uh, but it doesn't help much. Uh, c captures on d6. We have c captures on d6. Uh, and now Paulson just started to bring his king into the game, so he doesn't... Uh, get checkmated on the back rank, Morphe unpinned, and here uh, we have bishop captures on d7, and it was in this position that Paul Charles Morphy resigned the game. Uh, yes, that is the first time we've heard those words, and uh, it, it is it is shocking and hard to hear, I know, uh, but it did happen. Game 3 of their match in 1857 in the First American Chess Congress went to Louis Paulson. Uh, do mention this to your to your friends at the bar in the library. Point is, after captures, there's uh, really not all that much to do here. You are you are up a piece, and even though Morphy's up a pawn, it's unplayable. Even the great Morphy doesn't dare uh, continue <laughs> to, to to play this position. So uh, that's uh, something that uh, Willard Fisk mentioned in his letter that we started reading uh, in the previous video, but we, we didn't continue the letter. Uh, he said that because of that uh, fiasco in game two where he uh, blundered the, the move order uh, and then only, only got a draw, that he was really, really depressed, and uh, which, uh, of course, you, you could see in this game. Uh, his play was just not uh, on the level of, of the Morphe you're used to. Basically, in this game, Paulson was Morphe if he if he found some better lines. Uh, but Morphe just uh, play, played like a barbarian. He just wanted to checkmate Paulson. Paulson defended properly. And then in the end, Morphe just had uh, undeveloped pieces that were pretty much doing nothing. So uh, even the great Morphe had, had his uh, bad moments, and this is one of them. So uh, it's, it's important to, to, to check that out as well. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, game three of their match. We're continuing, of course, with, with game four. And I would just like to uh, mention to everyone that uh, tomorrow we have a Leech's team battle, uh, like the one we've already had. So if you, if you guys are interested, I will put two links in the description below. One will be to the uh, tournament page and one will be where you can join our team if you want to uh, join our team to fight in the arena. It starts at uh, 2 p.m. GMT or that's uh, 3 p.m. Central, Central European time. Uh, so uh, do check it out if you can. Uh, I will. I will also be streaming if my internet service provider, you know, provides me <laughs> with the service of internet, and uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, but yeah, that's it between the two of them. Uh, we're continuing their match in the next video. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Isaac Garzon, uh, Harry Hoffman, uh, Simona Splunge, uh, Nispel Jonas, uh, and uh, Owen Linzel for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Paul Morphy saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and uh, of course, uh, whatever else happens in the chess world, uh, which of course isn't much at the moment. Uh, but yeah, thank you all, I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.